Now, one of the biggest problems of being a student of astronomy is getting your brains around the absolutely enormous scales of everything. I mean, everything in space is big, but there are different sorts of big, and they're very different sorts of big from each other. So to help with this, we're going to try a few analogies. So let's imagine this Earth that I'm standing on, this enormous great world we all live on, was shrunk down to the size of a soccer ball. So this now is the entire Earth. There's the North Pole, there's the South Pole, Australia's down here somewhere. Now on this scale, there's the Moon. So that's about the right size of the Moon relative to the Earth. But something's not quite right here, is it? No, there's some nonsense going on. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're the right relative sizes, but they're, they're far too close together. We're going to need to move it way back. So, Brad, you've got a tape measure? All righty. Okay. Are we there? You're going to have to go much further. No. Are we there? Keep going. No. How about now? Uh, a little bit more Woo. there. Yes. Okay, so this is the Earth-Moon system to scale. The Earth is the right size compared to the Moon, and four meters apart puts them in the correct scale. So that's the Earth and the Moon, but what about the rest of the solar system? On this scale, the Sun would be about the size of this telescope dome. But it certainly wouldn't be that close to the Earth and the Moon. If we have this dome as the Sun, we'd have to put the Earth roughly over here, about a kilometre away. How about the rest of the solar system? Well, Jupiter would be orbiting about here, five kilometres away, with, near the lake. Saturn twice as far away, Uranus and Neptune out beyond the most distant mountains you can see here. How about other stars? Well, that's where this analogy starts to break down. To get to Alpha Centauri on the scale, the nearest other star to our own, you'd have to go 50 times around the world, all the way to the Moon. So Paul, that was a really great analogy, but it's not very useful for the scales that we're trying to look at. Yeah, we're trying to bring things down to earthly scales, we can understand it, we've completely failed. Okay, so we, we, I think we need a, a smaller scale analogy. So let's take everything we were talking about last time, the entire solar system, which if you remember on that scale was right out past the horizon, and let's shrink it down to the size of a coin. So the sun is in the middle of this coin and Jupiter is orbiting around the outside. Okay, so if this is our solar system and this is our sun, where is the next sun? Yes, where's the next other star? Well, to see that, we're going to have to do some flying. So we're out beyond Neptune now, travelling through the Oort cloud, the comet belt surrounding our sun. We're now leaving the comets behind, empty space, empty space, empty space, empty space. And now we're getting to the Alpha Centauri system. Alpha Centauri A, B and Proxima Centauri. And Brad is any solar system that Alpha Centauri has. What about beyond Alpha Centauri? Well, if we stick at the same scale where the coin is Jupiter's orbit, and now we're zooming out. Here we're looking at the Oort cloud, the Comet cloud. It now fills the screen. We're now leaving it behind into empty space, more empty space. Now we're seeing a few other stars like Alpha Centauri and Barnard star coming in. As we zoom out, we see more and more and more stars. We're now seeing thousands of stars, tens of thousands of stars, hundreds of thousands of stars, millions of stars, tens of millions of stars, stars everywhere. Until we get to the entire Milky Way galaxy, 100,000 million stars, which on this scale is about the size of Australia. And beyond that, well, the nearest other galaxy, Andromeda, is about the Moon's distance away. Not the Moon again. Yes, once again, we failed to shrink everything down enough that we can bring it into scales we can understand. OK, so I think we need another small scale. Well, to shrink things down even more. OK, so let's shrink things down really a lot. Remember, we've just had that the Milky Way galaxy is the size of all of Australia. But now we're going to shrink all of that, all of Australia, down to a coin again. So this is now all of Australia and that's going to be the Milky Way galaxy. So if that's the entire Milky Way galaxy, you've got another coin there, you can be the Andromeda galaxy and that's actually about the right distance. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is Milky Way and Andromeda M31 galaxy. 
okay, so if that's the Milky Way, this is Andromeda, what about other clusters? What about the Virgo cluster? Okay, so there's going to be other galaxies scattered around, but the nearest really big cluster of galaxies, which contains thousands of galaxies, is the Virgo cluster. So I think we're going to need some uh, Pete and Brad to come. You've got some coins, have you? Okay, so these are going to be a small fraction of the galaxies in the Virgo cluster. Okay, and you better run off about 10 metres that way to be in scale, okay? So we'll keep our Milky Way and Andromeda here, and those coins over there, about 10 metres away, that's the nearest big cluster of the Andromeda galaxy. Okay, that looks pretty, very, very fetching looking galaxy over there. Now, of course, there's much more than just one cluster of galaxies. There are going to be more galaxies all over the place. So, for example, those kangaroos in the background over there, that might be the coma cluster of galaxies. And there'll be more clusters and more galaxies all over the place. And in fact, this will go on forever. It goes on for infinity. You're going to have more and more of these scattered all the way to the, well, forever. <laughs>